A warm welcome to today's talk, Tuesday the 1st of August. Now, I want to be talking about two concerns relating to publication today. One is, I've talked to scientists around the world who've had great difficulty getting anything published, which says things like uh, vaccines might cause more complications than we're being led to believe. That's one publication problem. And the other is, a lot of mainstream media simply seems to be going along with the accepted narrative rather than challenging. We seem to be short of investigative journalists. So I'll be looking at a Swiss study which shows 2.8% of vaccinate, people vaccinated with an mRNA vaccine had vaccine-associated injuries. We looked at that recently. A Thai study which shows 4.3% of recipients had chest pain and 2.3% had elevated cardiac biomarkers. An Israeli study which shows 3.7% had chest pain and 0.62, still over 1 in 200, had myocardial injury. And we'll be looking briefly at the United States autopsy uh, report showing definitive linkages between deaths and this uh, pharmaceutical intervention. So what brought this to mind was this here. This is from um, the Daily Mail, actually, which is normally reasonably open-minded, so I was a little surprised by this article. Uh, But they say two facts, both which are are widely uh, misinterpreted. So let's see if we are misinterpreting. Uh, Fact one, uh, mRNA jabs cause myocarditis. No debate about that, but they say extremely rare. Fact two, heart-related deaths are massively above pre-pandemic levels. Again, no debate about that, but they bring out some experts experts to say uh, conflating the two is not only incorrect but irresponsible so um, in other words don't you dare question the narrative if you question the narrative you're being irresponsible aren't you a bad boy you're being irresponsible i mean i mean how dare they seek to curtail any legitimate questioning like this so no relationship at all between mrna vaccines and uh, heart related deaths and we mustn't conflate the two completely unrelated no one's saying they're highly related no one's saying they're unrelated i'm going to let you decide for yourself so let's start off by looking at this swiss study now i'm only going to do this very briefly because we did look at it this is the source here Uh, obviously i always put the references in check it out for yourself mrna uh, this is the moderna vaccine associated with myocardial injury was adjudicated in 22 participants 2.8 percent are pretty high <clears throat> one in 35 recipients 2.8 percent had vaccine associated myocardial injury to be clear and this was against match controls using elevated high sensitivity cardiac troponin concentrations which we looked at is a biomarker of myocardial damage and injury and uh, the troponins were significantly higher in the post-vaccine group than in the control group so again so we're seeing about 2.8 percent had, um, we were judged to have myocardial injury from their troponin levels. And of course, troponin levels are an absolutely standard way of measuring this throughout uh, healthcare around the world, as far as I'm aware, certainly in the United Kingdom. Now, the next study we want to look at um, is this one here. Again, I put the links there. Uh, do check it out for yourself. I'm not making these studies up. They're all there. But... As we've said, these studies probably represent the tip of the iceberg because I've talked to scientists around the world who can't get this sort of pub- uh, this sort of publication, this sort of information published. A lot of the mainstream medical journals don't want to touch it with a barge pole for some reason. Um, really, is a very strange and unfortunate time for science and medicine that we're living in, in my view. Um, didn't think things would come to this really. Anyway, this is the Thai study: cardiovascular manifestations of the, this is the Pfizer vaccine in adolescence so after this vaccine second dose Thai adolescent boys 13 to 18 year olds two schools uh, 314 again why aren't these studies bigger why aren't governments conducting these studies on a huge scale uh, most common cardiovascular signs and symptoms 7.64 percent had tachycardia huge amount shortness of breath 6.6 palpitations awareness of the heart 4.3 Chest pain, 4.3. High blood pressure, just under 4%. One participant (coughs) could have had uh, more or one sign. So some people had more than one sign. And when you add them all together, um, 29.24 had uh, cardiovascular manifestations. Um, These are just huge, huge unacceptable levels in, in my view. 
why is this still being debated? Why isn't why isn't this published all over the international medical journals? It's um, it really is very strange. Um, severe uh, seven participants, two point three three percent exhibited at least one elevated cardiac biomarker. So uh, two point three percent there with an elevated biomarker, somewhat lower than the Swiss study, but still astronomical. Myocarditis was confirmed in one patient after vaccination. But that, remember, that's only out of 314, which is very high. Four patients had suspected. So uh, two patients suspected pericarditis, four patients suspected subclinical myocarditis. The clinical presentation of myopericarditis after vaccination was usually mild and temporary with all cases fully resolving within 14 days, which is good. Now, um, this is often put forward uh, by proponents of continuing mRNA vaccination. Uh, as as being, well, don't worry about it, it's just a bit of myocarditis. Well, firstly, I don't think it's acceptable for some, some myocarditis. It's a serious condition. I'm just going to read from Davidson's Medicine here. This is, this is the definitive medical text that we've been using for generations. Uh, there is strong evidence that some forms of myocarditis may lead to chronic low-grade myocarditis or dilated cardiomyopathy. Patient frequently recovers from the acute infection but goes on to develop a chronic dilated cardiomyopathy 10 or 20 years later. Now this is talking about viral myocarditis primarily um, but of course we haven't had 10 or 20 years later. These studies are by definition have got short follow-ups. So yes, delighted that that's true. Let's hope it remains the case. Um, adolescents receiving mRNA vaccine should be monitored for cardiovascular side effects, as they were in the Swiss study. Of course, this is not being done in most places. The evidence is not being followed. Then we move on to the Israeli study. Again, putting a few things together here. Now, this is the Israeli study uh, here. Obviously, uh, full links and uh, all information are there, readily available in the public domain. Uh, prospective study on myocardial injury after... Pfizer mRNA COVID-19 uh, COVID fourth dose vaccine in healthy persons. Incidence of myocarditis injury after fourth dose of vaccine. Number again, relatively small. Why isn't it a huge national study? Again, using high sensitivity cardiac troponins, the international marker of myocardial damage. Um, taking anything abnormal as being above the 99th percentile of what it should be and, and a 50% increase. Reported vaccine-related adverse reactions. So fatigue uh, in 12%, muscle aches in... Uh, this is not at the site of injection, this is all over. The reason I put this in is because, to me, this indicates there's something systemic going on, which is what's more concerning. 9.88% uh, sore throats, headaches, 5.5% fever. Again, indicating some of the systemic to me if it's a fever, because... Fever is a febrile, the febrile response is systemic. Chest pain in 3.7, palpitations in 2.1. Seeing a lot of consistency with international data here. Shortness of breath, 0 0.3. Vaccine-related myocarditis in 2, 0 0.62. Thankfully, lower, but still very high. Um, the two cases had mild or no symptoms and no clinical sequelae. Uh, but remember, uh, not enough time has passed to say that definitively. I wouldn't have thought. So uh, the studies that have scraped past the sensor or sensors <laughs> around the world um, are fairly consistent. We're getting consistency between studies on these level of injuries, the increased troponins indicating the uh, the myocardial damage. We are seeing consistency. Um, the US autopsy study that we also looked at um, all autopsy studies, vaccine-induced myocarditis as a possible cause of death. Most cases had symptoms consistent with myocarditis prior to death, but some didn't. So some cases died without prior symptoms. They're just presumably heart inflammation resulting in ventricular fibrillation. But most did have symptoms, uh, both bad, of course. Uh, we established that all 28 deaths were causally linked to COVID vaccination by independent adjudication so there's causality here um, now 
The other thing that this study did do was it gave a graphic, which was pretty interesting, of the time at which uh, death occurred. Um, which, um, let me show you that one. There we are. Um, so this is on the zero days. And this is one through to day 36. So the peak here was on day three. Um, but again, limited follow-up. We're not talking about months or years of follow-up. The hope is that there was complete resolution, but the point is we don't know that. We don't know what we don't know. And then um, that was study was from that one there. Again, all fully available for your perusal. Now, uh, this, is, uh, this is the data from the UK government here. So um, I just want to show you... Um, just a few examples of that. If you go on that website, you can be there for ages because they, uh, they break the data down very, uh, very nicely. So this is excess mortality in England by age group. So we see it's high. Now, this age group here that I've picked out is the 25 to 49. And we see that at the moment, so that's 2022, 2023, we see it's higher. We are seeing more deaths in this young age group, 25 to 49, young adults, basically, that were um we're seeing there uh, th this is in the 50 to 64 year old age group again greatly increased um uh, greatly increased excess deaths but what about the cause well j just restricting this to cardiac causes here we see um increased uh, cardiac deaths uh, this is just english data actually so um so this is uh Excess mortality in England by cause of death, and this is uh, this one's just circulatory disease, right? So this one's circulatory disease, but we definitely see an increase. These darker blue lines are below average. The lighter lines are above average. It's way above average, way above average. This one is uh, ischemic heart disease, and again, way above what we would expect. And this one is, uh, this one's heart failure, which, bearing in mind what I read out, you know, we are seeing great increases in heart failure. Um, and this is into, uh, this is a 2023 data we're looking at here. Um, this is, does seem to be ongoing. So, there we go. That that was a um, quick run through the evidence. Um, but of course, if you think there's any possible links there, you're being, uh, uh, if you're conflating the two, you're not only incorrect, but irresponsible. So consider yourself well and truly castigated if you dare to think for yourself. I mean, I'm, I'm trying to make light of this, but the situation really couldn't be more serious. Um, I'll tell you what to think. But no, I'm not saying that. People are saying this. Don't get me wrong. I, um, I'm not telling you what to think, but people are telling us what to think. And um, don't need to think for yourself. Just get the information from the Oracle from on high. Don't worry about it. Don't think about it for yourself. Just uh, just be a good boy. Be a good girl. And, and don't 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 start conflating things that aren't conflated. And don't don't be irresponsible. Just incredible. Patronising. Patronising. We'll leave it there. Um, more to come on this, sadly, I fear. Thank you for watching.